In this walkthrough, we're going to demonstrate how to use the Insomnia Desktop HTTP client for sending requests to a GraphQL server. We're going to build a very simple GraphQL server using Node.js and Express. Then we'll look at common usage patterns in Insomnia, as well as a few convenient features that Insomnia also gives to us when working with GraphQL. Our entire project will have only two files, schema.graphql and server.js. Both of these files are available for you to download and view yourself. Let's start by creating a project folder. In our folder, we'll open our first new file called schema.graphql. For our simple server, we will store users. Each user has an ID, name, email, and some addresses. An address has a street, city, and country. We've defined our user and our address types. Our server will support one query, which is get user. Get user takes an ID, which is an integer and is required, and it returns a user. We'll also support a single mutation called add user. This mutation takes a required user input and it returns a user. Our user input is made up of a name and an email, both of which are required strings, and some addresses, which is an array of address inputs. Our address input is made up of a street, city, and country, all of which are required strings. And that's it for our schema.graphql file. Let's save it. Next, we'll write our server.js file. This file is going to have three parts to it, our initial data, our resolvers, and then our actual server code. Let's open up our file. To keep our project simple, we're not using a database. Instead, we're just going to load in our data at the top of this file. We'll have a users array, which contains two objects. Each user object has an ID, name, email, and an array of addresses. We'll give each of our users one address in that array. Next, we'll define the resolvers for our GraphQL server. Our get user query will take in an ID, and it will look in the users array to find the user with that corresponding ID. Our add user mutation will create a new user. It will determine the next ID to use based on the length of our users array, and it will assign the name, email, and addresses from the incoming user and push this new user to our array. Then it will return that new user. Let's save our file for now so that we can install a few packages for our server, and then we'll come right back to it. Our project will need a few packages so that we can build out this GraphQL server. We run npm install, and we'll need Express, Express GraphQL, GraphQL, and GraphQL tools slash schema. With those packages installed, let's go back to editing server.js. Down at the bottom, we're going to make use of fs and of make executable schema, which comes from the GraphQL tools schema package. We'll use the read file sync method from fs to read in our schema.graphql file. Then we set up our schema by calling make executable schema, passing in our type definitions and our resolvers. Then we set up an express server, which will listen on the slash GraphQL endpoint using GraphQL HTTP with our schema loaded in. And that's everything. We set up our server to listen on port 5000. And then we save our file and exit. In a separate terminal window, we start up our server by calling node server.js. Just to make sure our GraphQL server is working, let's send a quick curl request. We're going to set our request method to post. 
Our request will go to localhost 5000 slash GraphQL. We set the content type to application slash GraphQL. And we set the post data to be query with our get user query passing in the ID 1. And we'll be requesting the fields ID, name, and email. We send the request. And there's our response, which corresponds to our first user. Now that our GraphQL server is up and running, let's see how to use Insomnia for GraphQL requests. In Insomnia, we'll be working in a newly created collection for this project. From our collections starting screen, we click on New Request. We give our request a name. This will be a post request. And we'll be using GraphQL. And we create the new request. We set the URL for our request to our server endpoint which is localhost at port 5000 slash GraphQL. We set the body for our GraphQL request. Similar to our curl request, we set the query to be get user, passing it the ID of 1. We are requesting the fields ID, name, and email. We send the request. And just like we saw in curl, here's the data corresponding to our first user. Next, let's try out our add user mutation request. We set the GraphQL body to be a mutation, add user, which takes a user input, which has a name and an email. We'll hardwire that name and email here. For the user returned by this mutation, we request the ID, name, and email fields. And we send the request. There's our response with the new user. Along with supporting basic GraphQL requests like queries and mutations, Insomnia also supports schema introspection. For example, we can learn about the user object and its fields. We want to retrieve type, passing it the name user. Then on this type, we want to retrieve its name, kind, and fields. For each of the fields, we want the name and the type. And for the type, we want its kind and its of type. The response shows us a breakdown of the user type, which you'll recall, we defined in our schema.graphql file. Insomnia also lets you fetch and show the documentation for your schema, since this is made available by the GraphQL server. The result is an interactive listing where you can drill down through available queries and mutations, seeing types, fields, and inputs. If a schema has been fetched by Insomnia, and you can turn on automatic fetch, then writing GraphQL queries or mutations is made easier with Insomnia's built-in autocomplete and suggestions feature. As you type, Insomnia will suggest auto-completion for a query name or help with input fields that you might need. You can also press Control Space or Command Space, and available fields will pop up for you to choose. If you're testing your server and you want to use randomized values instead of hardwired ones, you can take advantage of template tags and the Faker plugin. For example, let's say we wanted our add user mutation to use a random name and email with each request sent, rather than a hardwired one which we would need to set each time. We would write our mutation to accept two variables, name and email, and we would set add user's user name and email to be equal to those variables. Then below in query variables, we would set up a name and an email. Before we can take advantage of Faker, however, we need to install the plugin. We go to Insomnia's Preferences, click on Plugins, and then we enter the name of the plugin to install it. It's Insomnia Plugin Faker. Now back in the query variables for our request, for the value of name, we press Control Space or Command Space, and we select Faker using Faker Name. For the email value, we're going to use Faker again, this time selecting Faker Internet. Then we configure Faker by clicking on Faker Name. And we want to set this value to be a first name. For the email address, we click on Faker Internet. And we set this Faker value to be an email address. Now, every time we send a request, the name and the email will be set by Faker to randomized values. Another way to provide dynamic values for requests is to use Insomnia's built-in prompt. Instead of Faker, we set our values to prompt, again using control space or command space and finding prompt. 
For each of these, we click on Prompt to configure the prompt. We set a label for each of these prompts, for the name and for the email. Now, when we click on Send, we're prompted first for a name and then an email, and then the request is sent. And we see that the newly added user has the name and the email that we just entered. This concludes our demo of Insomnia usage for GraphQL. In this walkthrough, we built a quick and simple GraphQL server, and then showed how to use the Insomnia desktop client for making GraphQL requests, along with some of Insomnia's additional convenience features for GraphQL. Thank you for joining us.